the next most important and the easier interprocess communication to be seen is the named pipe or the fifo so how is it important and how is it different from the pipe is explained already that the named pipe or the fifo is useful to get the communication established between two different processes altogether which i mean as two different files which are not related can communicate to each other through the named pipe or the fifo now here you can see that i have opened two different screens screen number 1 has the file fifo underscore write and screen number 2 has the file fifo underscore read the file fifo underscore write will let something uh, return into some file and the file fifo underscore read will go and read the file now these two files are totally different from each other and they are not related and i am going to use the methodology named file to get the communication established between these two so what happens here we need to first see the code so the code for fifo write will be seen first and here you can see that i have included a lot of header files which are very important and how do i know that these are the header files to be implemented included man page is the only go for me man fifo so you see this here so here it will clearly let you know on what are all the methodologies what are all the header files that are to be included when you refer the man page so man is the manual page that is available online that is available in every linux machine for you to refer something on the go or on the fly now what is the content that i am going to share with another file is available here in a buffer test data is the content that i am trying to share with another file through the fifo or named file now i am creating a fifo with a system called mk fifo that is nothing but make fifo so where do i create it i create it in the temporary directory or temporary file system so the temporary file system will always hold all the temporary things and you can specify the permissions here the permissions associated with them are 666 which means a read and write permissions read write and execute permissions are the permissions normally available wherein it will be specified by 4 2 and 1 so when you add 4 plus 2 it will be read and write permissions for two owner group and then others so i give permissions as a read and write for all the people who are going to use this file now i'm opening the file temp mk fifo in read only mode i'm in write only mode because i am the writer who is going to write the content test data into this mk fifo i mean my fifo so now how will i write we already have seen the system call write write will take the file descriptor this is a file and when you use a function it will give a return value that return value will represent the file that has been created in this case it is my fifo and it will be represented by a number and that number is nothing but an integer and that is none other than the file descriptor now i use that file descriptor here to write the content into it from the buffer i already have the test data into the buffer and with this step the buffer would have given the content that it has to the file descriptor the file descriptor in turn represents the my fifo and the my fifo is the file just like a notepad which will have the content now copied now i am closing the file descriptor for me to open it somewhere if i keep it open i cannot open it here again so i close it here we have simply done some two or three steps which will create the file i mean create the fifo file and then it will open it in write only mode then you need to specify the permissions then write the content through the file descriptor number that you have got as the return value then close the file descriptor now you come to the part of file read action now you are reading it from the different file not from the same file you can see the name of the file here as fifo underscore read dot c so here in this case i am just opening the file in read only mode instead of write only mode as i have done here you already created the file so you will not specify any permissions you need to just open the file i am opening it in read only mode now i get the return value collected when i use a read of fd what is fd fd is file descriptor the file descriptor will let you to be connected to the file that you are opening i am opening it and i am reading the content from the file descriptor and i am putting it onto the buffer just as in the previous case of pipe i am now copying things into the buffer and then i am writing it back onto the screen 
So what are all the steps here? I have clear writing action done through the file fifo underscore write. I have written it onto the buffer. I have the content on the buffer first. Then I have written it onto the file. And then I have opened the file read.c, fifo, fifo underscore read.c file, where I will open it in a read only mode. And then I will copy the content from the um, FD, I mean from the file descriptor to the buffer. Then from the buffer, I will write it onto the screen. This is how the named file works now we need to see the execution result since there are uh, two different files i will need two terminals for me to prove you the concept one terminal will correspond to the uh, read file another terminal will correspond to the write file you need to have some patience to see the way i am executing it cd or and see the way that i am running the file so gcc hyphen o first we are going to execute the write file because it is making sense to write the file first then to read it now i have compiled it dot slash write i'm keeping it ready let's see how how things go on here so see the see the way i am typing the commands you need to get familiarized with commands for you to become very good in linux otherwise it will become tough and daunting for you to later on get familiarized with it so now gcc hyphen o v4 dc hyphen o we need to name the file right so rd is read v4 underscore read dot c it goes out of the screen yes i did some mistake in typing it so let's correct the mistake v4 underscore read dot c now it's ready to read i need to run this so shall we run the read first there is nothing there is some junk data here so it means that there is no data available for you to read. Now let's run the write first. Write will not be able to write anything until the read is executed. So write is now executed. The read will be now run. You see the data here. Test data has come here. Which means the write and read are synchronized automatically. If I run read first, it will not get you the actual data that you really want. Maybe some garbage has come here because of uh, not cleaning the buffer. You One more time you will see that. We will do the write here. It will wait until the read is really executed. So that's it. That's all very simple. So that you can also practice that to your end. This is one of the most important mechanisms, just like pipe, because these are all very simple for someone to use it. And here we have seen the method how we can make communication between two different files. Right? That's it. We will go into the next mechanism, which is nothing but the message queue. The code will be very complex then, so you need to keep your fingers crossed to get the understanding perfect. Let's go into the message queue shortly.